car's engine. Fortunately, there's Quaker State motor oil, proven to exceed the highest standards car makers have established for protection against the destructive effects of heat. What's the state of your motor oil? Quaker State exceeds the highest standards for engine protection. Look for the Quaker State 360 rebate during National Car Care Days, plus additional savings from these manufacturers at participating retailers. Ability can only take you so far. Equipment counts for a lot. I'm always checking out new ideas. You have to to stay competitive. That's what I like about Pert Plus. Cleans and conditions in one step. No messing with two bottles. I get great results. No hassle, no fuss. Eventually, we all cross the finish. The winners just find a better way to get there. Pert Plus, great hair, no fuss. We are down to double digits in picks. 99 more selections in the NFL draft. Pick 154 on the clock is we progress. Actually, 153 just made by Baltimore was Jermaine Lewis, a wide receiver from Maryland. So there's a guy who gets to stay right down the road a little bit. Let's look at the last six picks taken in the National Football League draft here on day two on the deuce and among those players we just talked about Christian Peter a little bit and there you see uh, offensive line help potentially for the Chicago Bears down the line and you can add to that list Jermaine Lewis wide receiver of Maryland taken by Baltimore Miami is next on the clock we were just speaking of the coaching change in Don Shula the Shula who's still a head coach in the National Football League David Shula joins us from Cincinnati David how is uh, draft day one and two gone in your estimation for the Bengals a lot of activity. We feel it's going well, uh, Mike. It, we got the guy that uh, we had targeted a long time ago, and everybody seemed to know that we had targeted a long time ago, and Willie Anderson, a tackle for Auburn, from Auburn. We were excited about that. And followed up with a very productive player, uh, tight end out of Rutgers, Marco Battaglia, and picked up a big uh, guy. We're going to play at guard. He played tackle with Illinois. We're going to line him up at guard and let him compete in there, take on some of these big uh, defensive tackles you're seeing now in the NFL, and Ken Blackman. and. Defensive end that uh, has some pass rush capabilities and looked good in the hula ball, Javon Langford. Then we just took a safety out of Colorado State, Greg Myers, who has punt return ability as well as uh, the ability to get people lined up back there and move around. And, uh, very productive player at Colorado State in the WAC conference. Yes, he was the all-time leader at his school in punt returns in Greg Myers. I've stumbled across a phrase in preparing for the draft the last few days, ensuring the investments. And when I say that, I talk about a Jeff Blake that you have, Keith John a. Carter, the wide receivers. You've got the skill people. It seems like in this draft, you've ensured the investments by starting to build a younger and talented offensive line around those guys. We've been looking to shore up our offensive line in recent years. And last year, you know, we made some good strides there and uh, taking a talented tackle in Melbourne. Played pretty effectively for the end of the season and starts that he had. This year we had two more quality players early on in the draft that should add to uh, the veteran group that we have. And last year we gave up the fewest number of sacks in Bengal team history, uh, allowed Jeff Blake to uh, throw for, a, for what turned out to be a full bowl season. This year with John Carter coming back healthy, we, we hope to spruce up our running game and, and our offensive line has got to be a big part of that. We talk about Kijana Carter and his health. Mel and I visited with him in California. He seems to be on course to uh, be back this season. He's worked very hard at his rehabilitation. The doctors, our trainers, our rehab people have worked uh, daily with him. Uh, progress has, has been ahead of schedule uh, right from the beginning. Uh, he was down in Orlando at an informal passing camp we had about three weeks ago where he threw and, catch, uh, and caught the ball with the other guys. And, I think they were excited to see him out working. He was excited to be with the group, and he showed no ill effects whatsoever from his injury. Now, he's got a lot of steps that he's still got to climb here. And once uh, we get into training camp, we put the pads on. He goes to hit somebody or somebody hits him. Those are, those are things that you know, we predict are going to go fine, but until they actually happen, you're not 100% sure. But uh, John has done his part and will continue to do his part by all the hard work and the positive mental attitude that he's shown throughout. 
David Mel Kuyper. How you doing, Dave? Good, Mel, and you? Good, real good. I got a question. Willie Anderson, will he be playing right tackle or left tackle? And where is Melvin Tooten factor into this offensive line, Dave? We, we play playing right now and lining Willie up on the right side. He's mm -hmm. going to work uh, behind Joe Walter, our veteran player that uh, had a good season for us last year. And, and then Melvin Tooten, uh, we plan on, in the long run, uh, being the left tackle. And we we're looking at Kevin Sargent started our last ball game against Minnesota and played mm -hmm. left guard, and that's an option that we're, we're also considering. And then you throw Blackman in there at the guard position as well. So we feel we, uh, we've got some options and, and got some choices. We have competition, which is going to make everybody better. Dave, in terms of Kajana Carter, Mike and I were with him in California, and I wanted to see, and I asked Kajana, how do you plan on utilizing the training camp and the preseason games, you know, knowing that he had the injury in the Silver Dome last year? Yeah, are you going to bring him along slowly? Are you going to just let him see some, some playing time you know, early on or late? How are you going to handle him so he comes into the regular season 100%, David? Those are things we're, we're studying right now. We're taking it day by day with an eye toward the future. And, and the first hurdles will be getting through a consecutive days of our mini camps, our passing camps that we have coming up here in shorts and seeing how the knee responds there. And then once we start into the training camp uh, in July, uh, see how he responds to back-to-back -back practices uh, day after day and, and uh, just build from there. And then when, when we get to the scrimmage, we'll make a decision how much we'll play him there and then, of course, in the preseason games. But uh, we want to get him ready for the first regular season game. We, he hasn't played now in over a year. He's going to have a little bit of rustiness. He's going to have to shake off. But uh, we want to do it in a fashion that uh, we certainly don't want to overwork him in the, in the summer. Hey, Dave, Mike told us from Tampa earlier that Dad woke him up about 11.30 the other night. Has Dad woken you up at all this week with a good luck call? We talked uh, yesterday after our first pick, and he congratulated us on that. He knew that that was a guy that we were targeting and, and we're happy to get. And uh, I know he uh, is excited for us, and as he is for Tampa. We'll send him our best, and good luck to you. David, thank you. Okay, Mike, good talking. Same here. David Shula joining us from the uh, Bengals' war room as they prepare for their pick. They have another selection coming up in rounds six and seven. To talk more about the Bengals, we bring in Chris Fowler in our ESPN studios. All right, Mike, when I asked Mike Lombardi, a guy who competed against the Bengals in the AFC Central with your old team, the Browns, they really have a unique way of evaluating players and scouting. But they rely a lot on their coaches. Pete Brown is the director of player personnel. Frank Smouse is the assistant general manager. He's done a great job for them in the past, but, but they rely solely on their coaches. They ask their coaches to go on the road 35 to 40 days to work players out, set the board up. They use that information to collectively join Mike Brown and make draft choices, which is a little bit different. And it's not just because the coaches love the hand-on approach. I mean, let's face it, they don't, they don't want to spend the money on having a, a full-blown scouting operation. That's part of it. Well, I, I think a lot of it goes back to when, when, when Paul Brown was running the organization. He always wanted to have his coaches use it. That's something that's been part of that organization for a long time. Plus, I think the coaches want to be involved. I'm not sure they want to be involved the 40 or 50 days on the road, <laughs> but yet they want to be involved. Bengals known as straight shooters. Everybody knew that Willie Anderson was the number one pick overall. That, again, runs counter to the trend of the NFL of spreading misinformation. You guys are famous for floating wrong names in the draft or adopting the Giants' philosophy of just trying to say nothing. Why play it straight versus float the misinformation? What do you get out of it? I think what happened to us last year is a pretty good indication. Everybody kind of knew we were going to pick Kyle Brady. Somebody picked him in front of us, kind of su surprised us in terms of what the team that picked him in front of us. So you have to be very careful on what you say, what you put out there, because somebody from the back is always going to be very competitive to move ahead of you. And if they really, truly believe you're going to make the pick, then you've got an opportunity to lose it. And that's something you don't want to do. Honestly, it's definitely not the best policy in the NFL draft, at least not before the draft. One other comment on a guy who was just taken by Miami, Zach Thomas, the linebacker out of Texas Tech, Mike, a fiery competitor, enjoyed watching him in college football, but at the Walter Camp dinner, standing next to Jonathan Ogden and all the other stars of college football, Zach Thomas was mistaken for one of the high school players who gets invited to the banquet. He's under six feet tall, but the Dolphins and Jimmy Johnson get a guy who loves to play the game of football. Yeah, and, and had a huge impact on a couple of key Texas Tech games during the season, as we remember from Saturdays, Chris. Mel, your thoughts on Zach Thomas, I like who goes him. to Miami. I like him. He was with the hula ball with me. He's got a great attitude, smart kid. And, of course, with Gardner and with Bowens, you got the big defensive tackles that can occupy the center guard and free him up at about 5'11", 235 pounds to do his job. So I think he's adequately suited for Miami's scheme. So, yeah, it should be a good fit. As we sit on the Buffalo Bills pick 156 overall, let's refresh our memory as to the last six picks of this draft. 
before Zach Thomas, Jermaine Lewis, and then an offensive lineman, Mel, from a school, Indiana, Pennsylvania, that's produced some good football. Chris Valero, he was a four-year starter at IUP, and of course, he played in a conference that uh, sent the Lee Woodall uh, to the 49ers, also John Mobley this year to the Denver Broncos. And this kid, uh, you know, did a great job at IUP. Dominant drive blocker, can play center or guard.